Water is essential for life. All living things, from microscopic cells to the animals that roam the world's deserts, need water to survive. But in the harsh deserts of the American Southwest, how can animals like rock pocket mice and kangaroo rats survive when the availability of water is so limited? Hi everyone, I'm Noel Pollard, AP Biology teacher and author of the Lab Hamster Storylines. In this video, we are going to be talking about all things water. You'll learn about its molecular structure, polarity, hydrogen bonding, and the properties of water that make it crucial for supporting life. To better understand water, let's take a closer look at how it's put together. Water molecules form when two atoms of hydrogen form covalent bonds with one oxygen atom. Covalent bonds involve the sharing of electrons between atoms, but in the case of water, the sharing is not completely equal. Oxygen atoms have a very high electronegativity. That's science for they pull really hard on electrons. Hydrogen atoms can't match the electron pulling ability of the oxygen atom. So electrons spend more time on average on the oxygen side of the water molecule. This makes water molecules polar. This means that the oxygen side of the molecule has a partial negative charge and the hydrogen side of the molecule has a partial positive charge. The polarity of water molecules makes them stick to each other. We call this hydrogen bonding. I like to think of hydrogen bonds as being sort of like when the north pole of a magnet will stick to the south pole of a second magnet. The partial negative oxygen side of one water molecule will be attracted to the partial positive hydrogen side of a neighboring water molecule. This ability of water molecules to be attracted to each other called cohesion, means that water has a number of chemical and physical properties that made water-based life possible when it first evolved here on Earth some four billion years ago. So what other properties does water have that make it the molecule that life depends on? I'd like to start with water's nickname. It's often called the universal solvent because so many compounds dissolve easily in water. From polar molecules like sugar to ionic compounds like salt, there are so many things that will dissolve in water. This is due to the fact that the partial negative and partial positive regions of water molecules will be attracted to nearby molecules that have similar regions that are partially charged. This includes biologically important molecules like carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. The positive and negative ions of salts are also attracted to water molecules, and these electrolytes, as they're commonly called, play very important roles in the functioning of our muscular and nervous systems. The ability of water molecules to stick to each other by forming hydrogen bonds means that water has a very high specific heat capacity. That's science speak for you have to add a lot of energy to water to heat it up, or you have to remove a lot of energy from water to cool it down. This means that water actually prevents really rapid changes in temperature something that living organisms don't really like all that much. The ability of water to resist rapid changes in temperature is why our bodies are mostly water. The molecule actually helps us to maintain temperature homeostasis by avoiding rapid decreases or increases in body temperature. We'll even see examples in future units of animals that take advantage of this property of water to maintain their body temperatures by moving into or out of water. Water also has a high heat of vaporization. This means it takes quite a bit of energy to make a water molecule transfer from the liquid state into the gas state. As liquid water molecules are hydrogen bonding to other neighbor water molecules, to evaporate, they need to have enough energy to break free from all those attractions. When they leave the group, they carry all of the energy with them, meaning that the average energy of the molecules left behind is actually going to be lower. So this means that evaporation is a cooling process. It's why you feel so cold right after you get out of the water at the beach or the pool, even if it's a warm summer day. Unfortunately, rock pocket mice and kangaroo rats are so small that the amount of water in their bodies is not that much. If they relied on evaporative cooling to maintain their body temperatures, they would lose water very rapidly and they would be at risk of dying from dehydration. So they rely on behavioral adaptations like being mostly active at night and spending the majority of their time in burrows where the temperatures are not nearly as extreme as what they are above ground. The ability of water molecules to form hydrogen bonds results in cohesion when water molecules stick to each other, 
adhesion when water molecules are attracted to other polar or charged objects, and surface tension, which is how insects like water striders can walk on the surface of water. You could check out this video right here to learn more about how that works. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful.